one of the problems with fishing on the Wye or any rocky river is literally the number of little stones and boulders on the bottom. They can dictate your tactics. For a start, you can't use your normal barbel hooks with any sort of straight point. My first choice barbel hook is the Super Specialist barbel, but it's got a straight point and it's just no good in this, these conditions. The point won't last five minutes. So you have to use something with a curved point, and I prefer the boily hook, continental boily hook. It's not quite as strong as the barbel hook, but it's critically it's got a curved in point to it which will hold up much better on this sort of terrain. For a similar reason I'm using coated braid, strip tees. It's not as strong as two-tone but in these fast flowing waters it's nice and fluid and supple. We're just going to strip a bit off the end and tie up a simple rig on that. These barbel are not sophisticated so we hope to catch them with this particular little rig. The rocky terrain covers most of the river. If you're lucky, you'll find an area where rocks are a bit sparse and you've got a finer gravel. But in the main, this is typical of the bottom of the Wye. This section of the river is fast and shallow and well oxygenated. It goes through for nearly a quarter of a mile. And in the far distance, it drops into a big pool. Originally a salmon pool with the groin sticking out. On the left hand side of the river in the far distance you can see the white rocks there. That forms a big deep pool and at the end of this long run of well oxygenated water that should hold all the barbel. That's the bit we're going to give a try. Okay, I've been baited up. We've had a look around the fishery, looked at some interesting swims and we've been disciplined enough to leave this particular swim for about an hour. And we're hoping that the barbel have got onto that initial mix of grain bait and pellet and they're feeding away there vigorously. The setup is very, very simple. We have 12 pound main line running right the way through to swivel stop bead. We've got a three ounce lead. We don't want the bait to move anywhere. We don't want that to roll around and roll into the nearest rock. So we think that's heavy enough to keep it dead still on the bottom. We've got the section of strip tease braid just with a small section stripped off at the end to give it some flexibility. Small hair, great big pellet on there. I'm gonna glug that up, put a PVA bag on and knock that out. So, we're pretty confident that the barbel in here come to the scent. Secret recipe, this glug, it's so secret I've forgotten what I put in it. <laughs> Oh, is it a bit of both of it? <laughs> <laughs> PVA bag, side hooked, full of mixed sizes of pellet. Standard setup, pound and three quarter specialist barbel with a series seven feeder reel. A bit light for this job, but we're going to give it a try. I'm casting off the lip of the spool, introducing the finger to the spool, taking the bail arm away and just hooking the line there. The finger's not under, under any particular pressure, even with a three ounce lead, because I'm not casting any distance. But it gives me a little bit more control and I should be able to break the line as it spins off the spool um, and just break the lead before it hits the water. We've got the cloud cover we were promised, so things are looking a little better. And I'm hoping that although it's the middle of the day, these barbel will feed. Right, we're into the first fish of the day. It's hanging out there quite well. Don't think it's particularly big. This one doesn't even seem to be fighting. I wonder if it knows. Ah, now it's woken up. Ah. 
That's a peculiar fight, Ian. Yeah, just sort of came straight just, in. Just kiting in. You might well wake up when he sees the net. We'll try and steer it in there very gently and it won't know what's going on. Well, wasn't that a peculiar fight? Now it's woken up. It's too late now, mate. <laughs> not a bad fish either. It's not a bad fish. Yeah, you should have done your fighting in the water. There you are. What do you give us for that, Ian? Six? Five and a half? Five, five and a half, yeah. I think six is a little bit generous. A little bit generous. I'm generally a little bit generous with my <laughs> fish. Good. That's it. That's a better fish. That's a much better fish. What the feeder thinks. He's actually starting to swim upstream. Yeah, that's good. And there is a little bit of weed on the line as well, I think. Oh, yeah. Just nodding its head. Ian's fishing the same rod, a pound and three quarter specialist barbel, but uh, coming in he's using here, a prototype reel with a front drag. Front drags are mechanically easier to engineer. Oh, well, that was a barbel. Um, and they've got a better reputation for big fish. But, um, this one's quite a nice drag, isn't it? Yeah, it is, it's yeah, a nice, smooth. Seems quite a nice mechanism, quite well engineered. Got it wound up fairly tight. No, it's not that big. It's deceiving these fish. <laughs> yeah, he's not. It did take a lot longer. Change over to fluorocarbon has certainly worked. Oh, not a bad fish. Yeah. So, yeah. Look at that. Get it set up. Right, there we go. And she's in. Dark bronze. Beautiful thing. Aren't they lovely? Fought really, really well. Real torpedoes. Joy to catch. Back. Simple hair rig, a little bit of silicone on the bend of the hook, keep everything in line. Just going to thread up a couple of krill and crab pellets. <laughs> the bait needle, got a little shoulder at the bottom, the shoulder allows you to open up the hair into a small loop so that makes life easier to get the hair stopped through Just going to glug that up. These pellets are slightly over drilled. The hole through the centre is a bit large. So at least some of the glug goes into the middle. And the thing that we find most important here is the PV bags ready glugged up. They obviously send a scent trail all the way downstream the barbel, in theory, follow it upstream and we go from there. <laughs> 